Hello YouTube. So I started a new job today and I want to make sure that I'm still programming on the side. Uh, I have some educational apps that I am working on but I also don't want to stress myself out a whole lot by saying I have to work on this, only this, be super productive 100% of the time. Um, because, you know, last time I was working as a software developer, um, I got really burnt out a lot at like ev every job. So um, I'm trying to make sure I have some time to experiment with things that I find fun, like free droid RPG, I've been playing around with that, and just doing little small coding projects for fun for myself. So I've messed with the Incurses library before, but I decided to play with it again tonight. So here I'll show you what I have. It's, let me resize this to the proper, that's kind of the proper window size. So the Incurses library, oh, I think my connection to my server, eh, okay, there it goes. My internet has been very spotty today. Uh, but this just allows you to draw background colors and foreground colors on each of the character spots in um, your terminal. It lets you move your cursor to a specific place and draw to any given location instead of like in C++ just vanilla on its own. You know, your text starts at the top and you go from uh, left to right and it goes downwards from there. This one actually lets you move that cursor anywhere, uh, draw a character anywhere, and also set foreground and background colors as well as getting key presses um, and just detecting it. So, like right now, I'm just tapping the, si the arrow key and it's moving. Oops, and I won. Um, I've played around with in curses in the past. So this is a picture of an old version of pick and sticks that I made, but I lost the source code or I deleted it because I thought I wouldn't need it anymore. Um, let me also open the documentation. Another thing I worked on before just for fun was like a map editor. So you can see you could set colors here and then you can set foreground and background, uh, set a symbol, I don't, I don't think I had fill implemented, um, but save and quit. So I was like working on a little map editor and I kind of wanted to make a little RPG using in curses, but at the same time, I know that there aren't a lot of people willing to play terminal based games. And I know Dwarf Fortress exists, but it's using SDL, right? It, it just has ASCII characters as graphics in there. Um, this would actually be something you'd run in your terminal. Um, like for instance, I've seen like Tetris in the terminal. I had that on one of my servers at one point. So you could just remote in and play some Tetris. Um, but if I think if I made anything in, in Curses, I don't think many people would play it. So that's why I haven't really messed with it a whole lot. But if anyone's interested and wants to play terminal-based games, let me know. Maybe it'll be some, one of those little experimental things. Maybe I'll try to clone some simple turn-based things. Um, I don't know. Just something to, to play when you're remoted into a computer. But yeah, let's look at some of this code. So here I'm including the InCurses library. I'm also including the C standard library and the C time library. Uh, the library is kind of intended to work with C, but since I prefer my C++, I'm doing that. It's not object-oriented code at all, I just kind of separated things in the functions. Um, just so it's like the easiest to read. Uh, if I were going to go and make like an RPG, I'd start abstracting things more and putting things in objects and having managers and all of that. So. But here to set up curses, we call these functions. That's you know, in this documentation. I just kind of followed up on this. I've done it before, but you know, it's pretty easy to kind of get started with it at least. I set up some colors for grass, the stick in the player. This is the teardown for when you're done using curses. 
Um, and then I have some different functions. So paint grass, it's not really displaying an X sign, but it loops. The standard terminal window is 80, um, you know, characters wide and 25 characters tall, so that it goes through everything and paints it all. Maybe there's a fill tool, I'm not sure. I only kind of went through a little bit of the, the documentation. So it turns on the color, it moves the cursor and then adds a character to my row and column, but I named them X and Y coordinates, um, and it draws that symbol. Same for paint item, I'm passing in some symbol, which is some character. That could be a letter, it could be like the at sign or the question mark or whatever else. It's going to a specific row and column, but I like to name it X and Y, even though I have to show them backwards as Y and X because Y is the row, X is the column, and it turns on and off the colors. Getting input, I just use git ch, and uh, curses will make it so it doesn't like sit around waiting for you to hit enter when you type a character in. Uh, there are the key bindings for the different like arrow key directions, up, down, left, right, and all of that. Basic game code, only moving one character at a time, not having to worry about really like speed or anything like that since we have such a limited screen space, we don't need to think about acceleration and velocity. And this right here is just keeping it on the screen. Again, terminal size is like 80 wide, 25 tall. Refresh screen, that draws it to the screen. Here's super basic collision. Collision's really easy because both of my characters are just one character in size. So if they happen to be at the same coordinates, then they are intersecting. Um, random coordinates, some information, the quit, command, and the score. Then in main, it sets up curses, it um, seeds the random number generator. I, you know, I haven't written any classes in here, I just like put something together really fast. So a stick coordinates, set randomly, player x and y coordinates. The input character for whatever the player hits when they're on the keyboard. The current score, the icon for the stick, the icon for the player. And then the game loop. So um, the game loop, it just does a bunch of stuff and then waits for you to get some, to enter something and then it updates again. So it's not any sort of real time thing. It is just kind of going after you've made a selection. So. Painting stuff to the screen, checking the movement, if there's a collision, add to the score, then move the stick somewhere random. Um, if the score is 10, then it says you win, and then it quits. If you hit Q, then it uh, leaves, says goodbye. Otherwise, it draws the screen and waits for you to enter another key if you did quit, and then closes curses. So, oops. So running this again, if I hit Q, oops, sorry, my network connection is not great, goodbye, or I can go and collect these and you can see the score updating in the bottom. So if I were on Windows, I could like use PuTTY to get into the server and then play it from there, or, you know, any Linux machine, I can just SSH into my server and play it there, so that's all that is. It's not very fancy looking. Um, but it's kind of fun to play around with it sometimes, like, don't you just wish you were maybe a programmer back in the 80s instead of here in the 2010s, where things would have been more simple, uh, more simple programming times. But yeah, so maybe I'll do some more little projects, I don't know, we'll see, um, stuff. Hope that was interesting. If I do any other random little projects uh, over the foreseeable future, I'll try to post about it. Just if they're interesting. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna maybe go to bed. It's already 10 o'clock. And I have to start waking up and early because I have a job now. I mean, I used to, I had a job the last three years, but I never taught in the morning, so I would always wake up pretty late. <laughs> now I have to wake up early again. Okay.